Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Martin Lucas Investor. It's the Heron Earnings, ticker symbol HRT. X, hormone replacement therapy, I like to call it, HRTX, Heron Therapeutics. We are uh, broadcasting the official earnings from Heron, and uh, plus we've got discussion and uh, financials on the screen and all the rest of it. So uh, that's coming up. We've got 15 minutes before the event starts. There's a little bit of time to go uh, before. Uh, we might get some slides tonight. You can never tell until it begins. This is the um, the event here, and on our extra channel as well, at the same time, we are covering the Funware earnings. We are covering the Funware earnings at the same time, so uh, a lot going on tonight. It's going to be quite, uh, quite a night, I think, so there you go. That's all coming up in a minute. We've got Funware on the other channel, on the extra channel, this is with Sensei. Uh, he has a, a good audience waiting for him, waiting for him already. Uh, shall I shall I wind him up? We are already running. There you go. Uh, okay, we are already running. <laughs> Just wind him up. There you go. We're already running, but we're waiting for uh, Sensei to join in on his channel as well. But we are here with the Heron Therapeutics. Now, tonight's show was requested. Oh, and we're just going, going back down red again now. We're leaving the studio green just for a moment, but uh, we will turn it red if it stays down there. Um, we, we're doing tonight's show for Jason Davis, who's a new member that requested one of the perks that you get is you can request an earnings and reviews and all that kind of stuff if you um, if you are a member of our channel. Now then, let me give you all the links that you'll need tonight. Here's Alpha Spread. This is how I review all my stocks. There it is. There's Alpha Spread. Here is Stock Twits uh, as well. Here is Stock Twits for you. Okay, and uh, here is. Uh, Sent a message on Discord. Let's have a look. I have gone live. No broadcast. It seems maybe a new RTMP link. Uh, okay. All right. We do have an issue on the other channel. Let me just check for Sensei. Um, <clears throat> so just bear with me. Funware. Um, I just have to do a little bit of checking for my other channel just for a moment. Please bear with me. Sensei, please bear with me. I'm with you. I'm looking. I'm checking it live, your event, Funware. Let's have a look in the studio. Let me send you uh, the information that you need. Copy. Here is the, um, here is the stream key. I'll send it to you again. Uh, It is exactly the same stream key. It hasn't changed. It's the same stream key. So uh, I, I don't know if you've added a, a letter at the end or a, a space at the end, but that stream key should be working. Um, it seems like you have gone live, but uh, you've not been able to... Uh, send enough data at this precise moment. Copy. Let me give make sure that you've got both. Bear with us, folks. We're just double checking here. We have, uh, it does appear that we have, uh... oh, there we go. He's good and running. Sensei's up and running now. Let's listen in. Uh, we've got two shows running at once. Uh, Sensei, it appears, has a has a um, a bandwidth issue. That's what seems to be the case at the moment. I can see that. Anyway, I can't do anything else. Got to leave that with Sensei now, and let's get back to you guys. Switch the account. Um, 
<laughs> the Beastie Boys say sabotage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I sabotaged it so he couldn't do it. That's right. That's right. You're dead right there. Um, but um, we're keeping our eye on Heron. Let's see if Sensei comes back to me. We've got uh, 13 minutes to go before the earnings begins. Um, we'll see if everything works fine. We did this before and it worked absolutely fine, but uh, maybe uh, I think Sensei has an issue his end. And that's what's causing the issue right now. Um, let's hopefully it will work. Anyway, we got uh, 10 minutes to go. There's nothing to do right now. We're just waiting for the earnings to begin. Uh, we've got some time. We have uh, the broadcast here. This is the, the Heron Therapeutics HRTX broadcast. Uh, we are um, about 10 minutes away. There's no point me playing this to you. Nothing to share with you at the moment. Um, earnings never start early. There's the audio. Okay, they never start early. They very often start late, but uh, they never start early. So there it is running in the background and uh, we shall hopefully see Sensei pop up here in a moment. He's got time. He's got 10 minutes to go before the earnings begins. Heron, if we now look and refresh our screen and see what they, uh, the situation is, we are going green at the moment um, and uh, expected uh, 16 cents loss. Uh, on the share. Let's see what they do. Uh, Sensei, it tried to stream not enough data. You have an internet uh, issue. Internet issue. It seems. Okay. Just responding to Sensei, trying to help him. We're okay. We've got a few minutes to go. All right. Rick Stevenson. Stevenson, uh, good evening. How are you this evening? Lovely to have you here. Welcome to you. Uh, we're doing two earnings at once. I'm on this channel with uh, Heron Therapeutics and Sensei Crypto is on the other channel with the extra channel with um, Funware. He hears having some technical issues at the moment. It, it does appear. So, anyway, good evening to you, uh, Rick Steventon. Lovely to have you here. Um, if if there are more people for Funware, I'm okay. If you no no no, it's fine. We can't switch now. Uh, we can't switch now. The whole there's lots of different social media links linking everything together. And oh, hang on a minute. That's the audio coming through from Heron. We don't need it twice. It does appear we have slides. Uh, we, or we may have slides this evening, which is nice to see. We often do, not always. This is what it's looking like. Um, we've got 10 minutes to go. Be interesting to see. We may have some slides here. Yeah, basically, uh, everything is fine. He's not able to send through enough data. Um, YouTube isn't receiving enough data. It's to do with his internet. It's uh, Unfortunately, he's obviously got an issue there and is unable to uh, broadcast. I can't help with that. Um, there's absolutely nothing I can do. I wish I could, um, but uh, I can see he's not sending through anything. He has the correct information. He just cannot send it through. Uh, 
I have another issue like this, this, uh, um, I can, um, see you are trying to send, it's just not getting through. Yes, he's he's very frustrated. He's never had the issue before, but there is, really isn't. Uh, uh, I've uploaded, I've, I've read that, Sensei. Uh, the best I've ever had, trying to reset Ecamm now. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. All you can do is reset the computer, restart, reboot, all of those type of things. There's nothing I can do. I've checked everything. Um, I see the stream. I can see it there. Um, and uh, there there isn't anything else I could do. I wish, I wish there was. Um, anyway, uh, we are... On it, I'm just talking to your audience and letting them know we've still got eight minutes to go on this show, so we're we're okay. Um, hopefully, Sensei will get it working. Before long, uh, Heron, we've got seven minutes to go. Keeping an eye on everything for Sensei at the same time. Ah, oh, uh, I see you sending a signal through. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for Sensei. Uh, I see a signal coming through. Good luck, Sensei. Excellent connection. Yes. He's up and live. I think he's live. He's just, uh, you are live, Sensei. I can see you. We might just better hear him now. He went live and stopped. What happened there? That's really weird. Okay, we've got five minutes to go, so we've still got time to to assist. Um, that's a shame. He was live and then he stopped. You... Well, you were live. We've got five minutes to go and then we have to move on. You were live in preview. Then stopped. Okay. We have to uh, try and help if we can, but um, Heron is still um, four minutes away. So we're not, uh, you're not missing anything, folks. So please bear with us. We're trying to assist our uh, second channel. Ah, there you go. He's live. You are live, Sensei. Oh, no, he lost it again. Yeah. He's he's sending through and then he and then he and then he stops. It's a router issue. When that happens, it's a router issue and you have to restart. There's nothing you can do about that other than that. I wish Sensei well, I really do. Okay, we are three minutes to go. Hopefully Sensei will get it done.
Three minutes to go before Heron earnings. It won't start early, so we're not worried about that. Please just bear with us. We're trying to help uh, our uh, extra channel. Well, we've got uh, two minutes to go. As I say, the earnings won't won't go live early. They never do. I hope he gets it fixed. He's only just a few moments away now to start, and uh, he has to be has to be live in the next two minutes. Otherwise, he'll miss the beginning of the earnings. I all reset in server and trying to get live. You, uh, you went live, then stopped. Okay. We're going to have to leave now, Sensei, to his good graces, and hopefully he will be fine. Uh, we are just moments away now. We're two minutes to go still. Uh, here is the earnings. There is the earnings. It uh, won't start early, so we can insist as long as we can that uh, there it is. And uh, we're watching the price of uh, Heron. It's starting to go up now. We are green, which is nice. Heron Therapeutics. Um, waiting for the numbers. We don't have them yet. If you just tuned in, please click subscribe and ring the bell. Let us know you're here. Right, we're coming up to uh, 1 minute 20 seconds to go. Good luck to Sensei. Let's hope he does well. 1 minute to go now. <laughs> it's uh there's nothing worse and you just have to let it go sometimes. Uh, when you're live all the time, you know, you do see these things happen um, and, uh, you know, you have to let it go. George P., what's Heron price target? Uh, I don't have a price target. Um, we can show you more information as we start. We're going to start the call first and then we'll look into that for you. But, uh, right, George P., welcome to you. 30 seconds to go. We're going to start listening in now to the call. Okay, I'm listening in. I can hear the audio. You can't hear that, but I can. I'm just listening in. And this, the moment it starts, I shall bring it up. Okay, it's now half past. Any moment now. Thank you, Dan, for your subscription. I wish Senza the very best. Hopefully, I'll get it up and running. We're just waiting now. Uh, traditionally, uh, one or two minutes is normal. Therapeutics, fourth quarter, Here we go. 2023 conference call. I would now like to welcome Melissa Durrell, Executive Director Legal, to begin the call. Melissa, over to you. Thank you, operator, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Heron Therapeutics Conference call this afternoon to discuss the company's financial results for the fourth quarter ended December 31st, 2023. With me today from Heron are Craig Collard, Chief Executive Officer, Ira Duarte, Executive Vice President, Chief Financial Officer, Bill Forbes, Executive Vice President, Chief Development Officer, 
and Kevin Warner, Senior Vice President, Medical Affairs Strategy and Engagement. For those of you participating via conference call, slides are made available via webcast and can also be accessed via the Investor Relations page of our website following the conclusion of today's call. Before we begin, let me quickly remind you that during the course of this conference call, the company will make forward-looking statements. We caution you that any statement that is not a statement of historical facts is a forward-looking <laughs> statement. This includes remarks about the company's projections, expectations, plans, beliefs, and future performance, all of which constitute forward-looking statements for the purposes of the safe harbor provision under the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These statements are based on judgment and analysis as of the date of this conference call and are subject to numerous important risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those described in the forward-looking statement. The risks and uncertainties associated with the forward-looking statements made in this conference call and webcast are described in the Safe Harbor Statement in today's press release and in Heron's public periodic filings with the SEC. Except as required by law, Heron assumes no obligation to update these forward-looking statements to reflect future events or actual outcomes, and does not intend to do so. And with that, I would now like to turn over the call to Craig Collard, Chief Executive Officer of Heron. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Heron Therapeutics fourth quarter 2023 earnings call. Today, we are pleased to update you on our latest achievements in 2023, financial performance, direction on our development projects, cross-link training, and some insight into where we are headed strategically with our product. Since joining Heron Therapeutics as CEO back in April of 2023, we have taken significant steps to get this business back on track. It started with headcount and expense reduction, combined with getting the right management team in place. We've implemented a comprehensive streamlining of our financial processes, enhancing efficiency and accountability across the organization. As you can see from this slide, we have had a number of significant achievements in 2023 that have us well positioned as we move into 2024 and beyond. We've been able to reduce operational expenses from $182 million in 2022 to $135 million in 2023, and we should be in a range of $108 to $116 million in operating expenses in 2024. As part of this process, we have also looked to improve our gross margin. Historically, the company has had gross margins in the 50% range. However, through better inventory management and with some renegotiations with our manufacturers, we've been able to reduce COGS and improve gross margins to over 70%. We anticipate future gross margins to continue to improve up into the mid-70s range. We completed a capital raise early in 2023, which will allow us to have enough cash to get to profitability by late 2024. We closed the year in 2023 with over $80 million in cash and cash equivalents, which again is enough cash for us to reach profitability in Q4 of 2024. Moving down the list, we were able to restart the Vial Access Needle, or VAN, project along with the pre-filled syringe. Both of these projects are progressing nicely with the expected van approval by the end of this year and the pre-filled syringe approval expected in 2026. Both of these projects will provide significant improvement to our product Zenola, which is indicated for post-operative surgical pain. Our oncology franchise continues to outperform, and I'm happy to report total net revenues of $107.9 million which exceeded full year 2023 guidance. We are also very pleased with Zenolet performance in Q4 of 2023. For the first time in our history, we were able to do over $5 million in net revenue for the quarter, even while significant change was happening in the business. And last, in January 2024, we were able to sign the cross-link agreement combined with getting our label expansion for Zenolet. These two events should have a significant impact to Zenolet revenues as we move through 2024 and beyond. Now moving to product performance. The Oncology franchise continues to outperform our expectations with Symbonte net revenues coming in at $94.9 million for the year and Sustall coming in at $13 million. 
We have been very pleased with the oncology franchise, and we believe these products will continue to show the same consistency as in past years. The acute franchise is where we anticipate the majority of our product growth to come from as we move forward. We were very pleased that Relief hit a record of $5.6 million in net revenue for the quarter, which is the first time this product has ever been over $5 million for a quarter. Total acute care net revenues for the year were $19.1 million, which included Aponvi net revenues of $1.4 million. We believe Zenrelief and Aponvi are both well positioned as we move into 2024. With the Crosslink partnership, expanded label, combined with increasing morale, improved sales missions and targeting, we believe this is going to be a great year for both products. Moving to the Crosslink partnership, this agreement was signed on January 7th and really got kicked off in early February. We began the training process with in-person training of the Crosslink executive team, which went extremely well. We will continue this process through March and early April that will lead to having over 150 sales folks trained and ready to go. Post this initial group being trained, we will continue to roll out other areas of the country. As you look at this slide, it will give you a better understanding of what our footprint post full implementation of Crosslink will look like, and consider that this will add an additional 650 reps across the country that will be fully trained. We anticipate having the entire group fully trained and up and running by the end of 2024. We also believe that we will see an impact in 24 from this amount of representatives coming into place. But I do want to temper the enthusiasm as obviously this will take time before we really start to hit on all cylinders. I really believe the inflection for Zenrelift will take place as we move into 2025 after the launch of VAN and having all the new reps fully trained. But we certainly have positive momentum and we believe the crosslink reps will have an impact in 2024. We have been looking at doing more at the ASD level as we have tried to focus more of our efforts around the orthopedic space. After signing the partnership with Crosslink, it has become increasingly apparent that Crosslink has a significant footprint in this space and that our product mix works in parallel with the strategy of the ASD, which is to get these patients out of surgery and into rehab as quick as possible. Our perioperative one-two punch with Apon and Zenrelef will be extremely beneficial to our potential partners at the ASD level. I'm now going to pass the call to our newest hire, Kevin Warner, who is our new Senior VP of Med Affairs, Strategy and Engagement. Kevin feels a vital need for us of having hands-on experience with our products at the clinician level and is going to have a significant influence in our ASP strategy as we move forward. Go ahead, Kevin. Thanks, Craig. I'm so excited to be joining the hand therapeutics team and supporting the commercial portfolio of acute care and oncology care products. I have over 15 years of clinical pharmacy experience with a focus on perioperative care as a pharmacist, in addition to over a decade of experience in drug development, discovery, and clinical trials as Director of Pharmaceutical Sciences at Osteotherapeutics. As Senior Vice President of Medical Affairs, Strategy, and Engagement for Heron, it will be my job to support the accurate dissemination of medical information to our team and providers, assuring patients have access to the best possible care. Forming strategic alliances and collaborating with the medical community to assure Heron's products become part of the standard of care as medical literature dictates. I look forward to working with our team at Heron on expanding indications, access, adoption, and medical literature with our current commercial portfolio and future products. I will focus on our acute care portfolio today as I've had the pleasure of having extensive real-world experience with Zenrelief and upon witnessing the positive impacts on our patients and health systems. Enhanced recovery after surgery protocols are evidence-based protocols that are essential to patient outcomes and sustaining the financial viability of our health system. The primary clinical focuses of enhanced recovery after surgery are reducing post-operative pain while minimizing opioid consumption and the control of post-operative nausea and vomiting. Post-operative pain and post-operative nausea and vomiting are two of the most common concerns for both patients and clinicians. Similarly, and upon me, offer what we consider best-in-class long-acting solutions to these problems. Implementation of Zimmerly and upon me as the foundation of our enhanced recovery after surgery protocols, we believe may improve overall patient satisfaction, clinical outcomes, and overall quality of life. On an institutional level, while supporting enhanced recovery after surgery, both Zimmerly and upon me can have a positive financial impact on our institutions. 
Both products are currently separately payable in the hospital outpatient and ambulatory surgical centers by CMS. In addition, many commercial payers are providing coverage for generally outside of the surgical bundle. Improving the efficacy of our enhanced recovery after surgery protocols combined with separate reimbursement outside of the surgical bundle is critical for the financial viability of our health system and clinical outcomes of our patients. I want to touch on Apondi, a prepotent injectable emulsion, and the current unmet need and lack of awareness. Post-operative nausea and vomiting is often overlooked or under-recognized, secondary to the timing and different phases of care in which patients can experience this. Post-operative nausea and vomiting is ranked the number one most undesirable post-op complication by patients, but also presents clinical risk factors as well that can lead to increased length of stay, readmission, and surgical complications. Post-operative nausea and vomiting rates can reach as high as 80% in high-risk patients. The current guidelines recommend the use of three or four agents in patients with risk factors, making them moderate to high risk. In the United States, we perform over 65 million diagnostic and surgical procedures, of which 50% of those patients are at moderate to high risk for post-operative nausea and vomiting. A preptin is set on the market in an oral formulation and as a pro-drug infusion phosphate preptin. The oral formulation is delayed on set of action of about one to five hours Phosphate preptin requires compounding and a 20 to 30 minute infusion, followed by systemic conversion of the pro drug to the active form. Because of this, they have not been widely adopted in the perioperative space, despite a preptin being ranked the number one most effective antiemetic for a large scale CACA meta analysis of nearly 100,000 patients. Along with the efficacy, a preptin also has an excellent safety profile without sharing typical side effects of our commonly used antiemetic therapies such as QT prolongation, sedation, anticholinergic effects, or extrapyramidal side effects. The safety profile is critical when we are combining multiple agents for our moderate and high-risk patients. Pondy's 30-second IV push and rapid target receptor occupancy will allow for greater implementation of a competent in the acute perioperative phase by those providers, mainly anesthesia, most likely to prescribe. Pondy's safety and efficacy profile gives us a long-acting solution with a 48-hour duration to one of our most significant post-operative complications, post-operative nausea and vomiting. We're looking forward to the updated guidelines on the prevention of post-operative nausea vomiting expected in 2024, which will enhance the education and awareness around the impact a Pondy can have. For Zen Relief, our focus will be on broadening provider awareness and associated patient impact. The clinical trials of Zen Relief speak for themselves being the first and only FDA-approved extended-release anesthetic proven to reduce pain and opioid consumption. Today, I want to highlight some of the significant drivers to growth that have been implemented or will be this year. First of all, the significant label expansion for Zinnerly, approved by the FDA on January 23, 2024, which Zinnerly is now indicated in adults for installation to use post-surgical analgesia for up to 72 hours after soft tissue and orthopedic procedures including foot and ankle, and other procedures which direct exposure to articular cartilage is avoided. This has essentially doubled the number of significant indicated procedures. As a clinician, when I think of indicated procedures and appropriate use of thin relief, I consider any procedure in which a provider would typically prescribe an opioid post-operatively. They should be considering use of thin relief as the foundation post for post-operative analgesia to minimize or eliminate the need for opioids minimizing the acute pain, risk of developing chronic pain, and support clinical recovery. The label expansion will also have a great impact on formulary substitution. Some formularies have been hesitant to adoption due to the limited number of indications, necessitating need for having multiple agents on formulary and subsequent budget impact. With the new broad label for Zimili, other agents that have claimed long-acting but have not proven superior to standard care anesthetics can be removed from formularies and literally can be adopted as the long-acting foundational element along with cheaper generic anesthetics for the acute phase. Additionally, third-party data continues to surface, surface with results that align with our clinical trial showing significant impact on post-operative pain, opioid consumption, length of stay, and functional outcome. The opioid epidemic continues to be at the top of our news feed, costing the U.S. health system an estimated $1.5 trillion in 2020 and many patient lives. Our major accrediting bodies and government agencies are taking notice and stepping in. The Joint Commission now includes metrics for opioid stewardship to be accredited, 
The No Pain Act, which will begin in 2025, will provide payment for non-opioids in the outpatient surgical setting that have proven to reduce or eliminate the need for opioids. Along with the opioid settlement, currently being distributed to states in the amount of $53 billion that will be utilized to support awareness, prevention, treatment of the opioid epidemic. All these factors will have major impacts on awareness and adoption of thin relief. One of the most important factors, I believe, will be the crosslink partnership that Craig outlined previously. Having the additional boots on the ground, if you will, will be critical to the successful implementation of thin relief as the foundation of multimodal analgesia across the nation to change how we view post-operative pain and the need for opioids across the surgical paradigm. I would like to now turn the call over to Dr. Bill Ford. Thank you, Kevin. We are certainly excited to have you join our team. The development opportunity for Zenolab has envisioned three steps. The first was label expansion, which has been realized. The next step involves device modification in the form of the vial access needle or band. And the final step concludes with the pre-filled syringe or PSF. In regards to the van, it is designed to improve efficiency and preparation, and it will achieve this in two ways. Firstly, the van will substitute the current market presentation of the device, which includes a vented vial spike, or VVS, with the van itself. The van will provide a more rapid and easy withdrawal of the drug product into the syringe that is used for installation into the patient by the physician. The van has been specifically designed for this purpose, and in testing the van, has outperformed other vented vial spikes available on the market today. Secondly, the van will allow for an even more secure presentation of the product into the sterile field present in the surgical room by encasing the Zenolef file into the sterile shroud of the van. This will re result in a more efficient process for operating room staff to prepare the product for physician use. We anticipate the van approval in Q4 of this year. Of course, the ultimate solution to ease of use of Zenolef is the PFS, and we expect the PFS to get approved in Q4 of 2026. In this product presentation, the entire tray is sterilized and ready for immediate use. The sample system involves a system and the sterilization process itself. Once this is available, all barriers to preparation will be removed. With that, I will now turn this over to Ira Duarte. Ira? Thanks, Bill. Craig has covered our product performance in his comments, and I will just add a few additional points about our Q4 2023 and year-to-date results. Our product gross profit for the fourth quarter was $24.3 million, and $61.9 million for the 12 months ended December 31, 2023, representing 71% and 49% of net revenue, respectively. The annual margins were negatively impacted by write-offs of Zenrelef inventory during the year. We do not anticipate any large Zenrelef write-offs in the future. SDNA expenses for the three and 12 months ended December 31, 2023, with $23.6 million and $116.7 million, respectively, compared to $26.7 million and $119.9 million in the same period of 2022. Research and development expenses were $10.9 million and $55.9 million for the three and four months ended December 31, 2023, compared to $11.1 million and $107.5 million in the comparable period of 2022. The decrease in spend was primarily related to decrease in costs related to Zenolef as production scaled up, validation activities and raw material qualifications were completed in 2022. In addition, overall personnel and related costs decreased due to the reductions in force implemented in June 2022 and June 2023. We believe we can continue to reduce costs moving forward in this area as we continue to increase efficiencies. The net loss was $10.7 million for Q4 2023 and $19.9 million for the comparable period in 2022. Looking to a total year-to-date net loss, 2023 is a net loss of $110.6 million compared with $182 million in the comparable period of 2022. 
I now would like to give a little bit more clarity on our overall operational spend and cash burn for 2023. We began implementing our corporate restructuring plan in early June, which included several cost-saving strategies, including a reduction force, as well as overall company-wide spend reduction. We now have much more visibility into our operational spend and see clear paths to profitability. If you look at the slide from left to right, you will see our overall operational spend for 2023 of about $172 million, which we reduced to $155 million after excluding the reorganization charges of $18 million. Reducing these expenses for non-cash stock compensation, not related to severance, and depreciation and amortization of $27 million, our cash op expense was $128 million for the year. This compares to $177 million of cash op expense for 2022. Please keep in mind that we started implementing our company-wide reduction mid-year 2023, and as mentioned in our previous earnings call, we believe our operational run rate, excluding stock compensation and depreciation and amortization, going forward will be between $108 million to $160 million, and cash burn will decrease every quarter as we have stabilized our spend and revenues are increasing every quarter. Moving now on to our guidance for 2024. We are reaffirming our previously given guidance for revenue of $138 million to $158 million for 2024 and improved growth margins between 68 to 70 percent. Our operating spend, excluding stock compensation and depreciation and amortization, is anticipated to be between $108 million to $160 million, and EBITDA, excluding stock comp, will be between a loss of $22 million to income of $3 million. I would like to reiterate that we anticipate getting to positive EBITDA in Q4 2024, and based on this, our strong balance sheet and our current operation plan we do not anticipate having to raise any additional capital. And now we would like to open the call for any questions. The floor is now open for your questions. To ask a question at this time, simply press the star, followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll now take a moment to compile our roster. Okay, everybody, um, please tap the like button, our subscribe first if you can. Comes from the line of Serge Bellinger. Thank you very Needham much. Company. Please go ahead. We're waiting for our question to come in. Any impact? Your line is open, and sir. Pardon me. Your line is open. Please go ahead, Serge. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. I'm sorry, Serge. We All didn't right. hear the part of that. Got it. Got it. Um, so two questions related to Zinralas. The first one, it's been six or seven weeks since the label expansion. Um, just curious if you've seen any impact from in demand or usage since that. And then maybe secondly, if you can just talk about what the No Pain Act means for, for Zinralas. Um, I guess specifically, what kind of coverage do you have now and how do you think that changes once we flip the calendar to January 25, when the No Pain Act takes effect. Thanks. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I would say, again, anecdotally, when we got the label expansion, obviously there's a lot of excitement. When we go into uh, certainly centers where we already have some business, it's certainly easier to go deeper into those accounts, and we're seeing some of that. Um, actually, the day one of the label expansion, I saw, uh, I guess, our first on-label um, spine surgery. I was actually in the surgery in Asheville, North Carolina. So we're certainly getting some of that. I think that, though, combined with, uh, you know, certainly Crosslink. We had the uh, uh, a meeting at AAOS out in San Francisco. We were with Crosslink some and had some physicians coming by the booth and everything and just the excitement around that. But I don't think you're going to see necessarily a dramatic impact as of yet. But we're starting, you know, we're certainly seeing some some impact. But I think, again, over time, as I said in my comments, I think with Crosslink, with the label expansion, the launch of Van later in the year, I think this really begins to take off late into the year, into uh, 25, when we really start to see an inflection. But we're certainly seeing some positive, seeing some positive momentum. Uh, regarding the No Pain Act, I'm going to turn it to Kevin Werner, uh, who can give a little bit more insight into that. 
Yeah, hey, Serge, thanks for that question. So the, the No Pain Act is going to be significant from multiple facets. So what the No Pain Act does is provide reimbursement in the hospital outpatient procedure department and the ambulatory surgical centers uh, for products that have been proven to reduce the need for opioids. Um, so in the Zinner Lease instance, we're already covered in both the HOPD and ASC through 2025 for Q1. Uh, so the No Pain Act is going to go through 2027, so it'll essentially establish that reimbursement for our facilities through 2027, and CMS has discussed a longer uh, time frame from that beyond, possibly extending all the way to 2030. So we look forward to working with our legislatures on that and continuing to get reimbursement for our patients to assure that it is covered, but that'll help assure the adoption and the pull through for many institutions. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next question comes from the line of Carl Burns with Northland Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thanks for the question and congratulations on the results and the progress. Um, you know, understanding that 2025 is really set up to be the ramp year for Zembrelev and Pombe, uh, you know, how do you see, and I know you touched on this a bit already, how do you see the cross-link collaboration and the label expansion transitioning into Zembrelev cells in, in 24? I think the prior language was, you know, a, a QCAM yes, product. Yes, Heron did beat year year earnings, growth. expected uh, so to lose 15 number, cents a share, 16 cents a share. Thanks. They're now losing seven cents a share. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, again, one of the reasons we did get that range earnings. was we weren't sure exactly, you know, when and how this may take off. But, you know, to your point with expanded label and, and the thing I can say about the Crosslink partnership, I mean, you know, every now and then you you do one of these where things seem to work perfectly from a standpoint of the personnel and, and, and just, you know, how things come together. And we really do feel that way, that the Crosslink folks have been fantastic. Uh, they certainly are bringing, uh, you know, uh, different relationships that we may have uh, currently with, you know, some of the surgeons and so forth. So that's been, uh, you know, everything we had hoped for at this point. I think one of the surprises that we had when we did the initial training, uh, and, and I was there along with, you know, our team, um, we did that in person. And, again, it was just very receptive. We had the executive team at, at Crosslink. And so from there, we did another training last week in person uh, with, uh, you know, some of the sales folks there. And so we're going to continue to do those. And so, we should, as I mentioned, we should have uh, in the next, you know, 30 days or so about 150 reps that will be sort of fully out there and running. And uh, so, again, we, we will certainly see some impact. Um, I'm just trying to temper this a bit because until we really get fully up and running and, uh, and, you know, and do this for a little while and train some of these other areas of the country, I don't think it's going to, you know, really take off and inflect until next year. But, look, we're, we're having positive things happen so far and we're pleased. So, so far this is going as planned. Great, thanks. And then just a follow-up. Um, there also seems to be, and you again touched on this, a significant opportunity in the ASC segment, particularly to you know cross sell both Zumber Eleven and Apondi, uh with your Salesforce and with the Crosslink collaboration. Um, you know, could you want to can you elaborate a little bit about what your thoughts are in terms of how big that opportunity might be? Thanks. Yeah, well, certainly, you know, the market is moving that way, um, and again, we've tried to. I hate to say over, overly simplify things, but we've really tried to go where we think we'd be most successful now and sort of niche this product a bit. And so that has led us to the orthopedic space and we'll certainly, you know, uh, expand from there. But that really is in parallel where, where that space is going with ASC. So <clears throat> as we look at our business, we think there's a real opportunity as that space expands for us to really have a true partner there. Because, again, if you think about the goal of an ASC, is to get these patients out quickly, to get them into rehab. Uh, the last thing you want is any patients that would have, you know, any kind of nausea associated with the surgery going back into the hospital. And so this is where a PONV can come in and play. And so, you know, for those higher risk patients. So with our kind of perioperative one-two punch, we really do feel that these two products are really positioned perfectly with exactly what the ASC is trying to do. And so, uh, again, with Crosslink already having, you know, some presence there, we think that's going to be extremely helpful in, you know, opening some doors for us there and, and really trying to move down that path. Great. Thanks, and congratulations again. Thanks, Carl. Again, the floor is now open for your questions. To ask a question at this time, simply press the star followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. Our next question comes from the line of Kelly Shi with Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, 
this is Clara on for Kelly. Um, congrats on the great progress. And just one quick question on the cost reduction. So just wondering, do you have any plan to further uh, exactly, exactly your cost reduction plan in 2024? Like, should we expect R&D and SGNA to continue go down in 2024 and 2025? And like, at what point do you think your operating uh, costs will be at a more stable level. Thank you. No, thanks, Claire. I appreciate the question. Um, no, look, the range we've given uh, from 108 to 116 million, I mean, again, we'd love to be at the lower end of that. We're just, again, as we've made some of these changes, we're trying to, you know, now kind of sort through what that may look like this year, and we've given ourselves a little bit of wiggle room, but I, I don't think you're going to see significant cost reductions from here. I think we're sort of at a level now where you can kind of expect going forward. Uh, but again, we feel pretty comfortable within this range. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There are no further questions at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Craig Collard for closing remarks. I just want to thank everyone for joining the call today, and we really look forward to speaking to everyone next quarter. Thank you. There we go. There's the earnings. Now, I'd like to, uh, I would like to now uh, end the call here. But what I'd like to do before we go is ask if you could tap the like button and subscribe. But what I'd like to do now is uh, Sensei is running on our extra channel with fun uh, 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 earnings this evening. So what I'd like to do now is... Uh, is, is send you now directly, automatically to Sensei. Uh, he is doing a show for you now. We can keep everyone together, keep the family together. So uh, if we could do that, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, automatically give you the link and send you across to our extra channel and uh, we can keep the conversation going. Because our audience was split this evening, uh, a lot of our families on the other channel. So what we're going to do now, we had a few technical issues, but we, f we fixed it is uh, if you wouldn't mind, if we can send you now directly from this show, Heron Earnings, to the last part of um, of uh, Funware to give Sensei some support tonight because we did have a bit of an issue, but we have resolved it. So uh, let's give uh, Sensei a bit of a surprise now when we all jump in. So uh, let's do that right now. Let me sh just share with you uh, where Sensei is right now. This is what he's doing right now and let's give Sensei a bit of a bit of a surprise. Are you ready? There is Sensei look running our second earnings tonight. If you could click on that, jump in there. We had a technical issue and we want to give Sensei a bit of a bit of a surprise right now when everybody pops in. How many people are with me? We've got a good audience. Are you ready? So I'm gonna end the stream right now. There is the link. You can click on it or automatically go right there. So I'll see you back in the morning for the opening bell, but let's go and surprise Sensei right now. You ready? Okay, here we go. Everybody, the link's in the chat, and let's jump in. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.